Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue talking about the sky and get more in depth into motion in the sky. So this image here is of the Golden Gate Bridge. You can see in the sky there are these lines. This is called a uh, star trails image. So we're actually looking at the path that these stars traveled. So this would have been taken with some kind of uh, long exposure camera, meaning that the camera is uh, capturing the light over a very long amount of time. So this must have been a couple of hours uh, to see the stars travel through the sky. So by the end of this lecture, you'll start to understand a lot more about what these star trails can actually tell us. So here we have our celestial sphere. So you're going to learn some new vocabulary today that's going to be pretty important when we're talking about the celestial sphere and um, our view on Earth. So here is, let's say this is us standing here on Earth, this shadow man. Here is Earth, and you'll notice that we have the North Pole of Earth and the South Pole of Earth in the, uh, on these red lines. So they line up perfectly with the North Celestial Pole and the South Celestial Pole. So this uh, celestial sphere rotates through the poles uh, around from the east, everything rises in the east and sets in the west. And we know that is because the Earth is actually rotating uh, in this direction. So it appears, looks to us, like this celestial sphere is all rotating together, uh, rising in the east, setting in the west. So you'll see this, um, this sphere here in this whitish grayish color, that is outlining the horizon. So anywhere on Earth, you can see half of the celestial sphere. Well, assuming you have no buildings or trees in the way, anywhere on Earth, if you're in a field, you can see half the celestial sphere. You can see the half of the celestial sphere that is above the horizon. So the horizon being uh, straight out in front of you in all directions. So the other half of the celestial sphere you cannot see because it is below the horizon or it's below the Earth. The Earth is solid, we can't see through it. So you can't see stars um, on the other side of the Earth. So if you were in a different place on Earth, you would see different stars because you would see a different half of that celestial sphere. So your horizon is what cuts the celestial sphere in half. So you're able to see everything that is above your horizon. So another important term, important term to know is the zenith. So the zenith is the spot on the celestial sphere that is directly above you. So if you move, the zenith moves. Your zenith will move. It is the spot on that celestial sphere that is directly above you. And the nadir is the spot on the celestial sphere directly beneath you. So you will never be able to see the stars that are beneath you. So the, uh, these two here, if you draw a line straight from the zenith, it intersects the horizon at a 90 degree angle. So the zenith is directly above your head. The horizon is uh, cutting that celestial sphere in half, determining what you can see. Um, we have the north and the south celestial poles aligning with our north and south poles. And we see that celestial sphere is rotating around or appears to be rotating around because the Earth is rotating. So as the day goes on, as the night goes on, as that celestial sphere is rotating, new stars are rising above the horizon into the half of the celestial sphere that you're able to see. As time goes on, uh, stars that you can see will set below the horizon in the west, beneath your horizon, so you can no longer see them. So throughout the night, if you were to stare at the sky all night long, you would see stars, you'd see the whole celestial sphere rotating from the east to the west. So as the hours tick on, you'll see new stars appearing in the east, new to you, I should say, um, and stars that you could have seen in the west will begin to set beneath that horizon. So here there are uh, just some definitions. So the zenith, again, right above your head. Uh, the north and south poles align with 
the Earth's poles, so that celestial sphere is uh, rotating around that pole. And then the celestial equator. Uh, I think I forgot to point that one out. The celestial equator is essentially the halfway point between the north and south celestial pole. So it is the equator of the celestial sphere. So this uh, celestial equator will always intersect your horizon at the east and the west points. So at directly east and directly west, the celestial equator will intersect. So it's not always at this angle. That depends on where you're standing on Earth. But the celestial equator always intersects your horizon in the east and west. So this is a map of the sky above Mission Viejo on January 28th, so on Thursday, the day that we will meet for um, live class. So this is the nighttime sky on that day, on Thursday. It's a very cool website. You can go in and do quite a bit with it. We'll visit it a couple times um, throughout this course. But here is the link if you want to look. You can look at anywhere in the world. You can see the sky. So what this is showing us is the half of the celestial sphere that we are able to see from the vantage point of being in Mission Viejo on Thursday, January 29th, 2021. So what we see here, here is the brightest star um, in our sky, that is Polaris. So you will see that we have our horizon all the way around the uh, edge of this circle. So this is showing sort of a flattened view of the half of the sphere that we are able to see. So our horizon would be all the way around. So this would be in the north direction. Here is east, here is south, and here is west. So directly above our heads is our zenith. So zenith would be Taurus right here. This constellation would be um, directly above our head. This would be straight out to the north. This would be straight out to the south straight to the east and straight to the west. So the stars will rise in the east, and move across our sky towards the west throughout the night. So this is an image that we will see quite a few times in this class, or a similar image to this, a similar setup. So you can think of it as a flattened version of the half of the celestial sphere that we can see, with the center being the top of the dome directly above our heads and the outside circle here being the edge of our horizon. So now when we think of stars moving, we like to think about star trails. So not just because they make incredible photographs, but because it's really helpful to determine where you're standing and which direction you are looking. So star trails are the trail of the star throughout the night or throughout the day. Um, depending on how you are trying to track these stars. So star trails are going to look differently depending on where you're standing and which direction you're looking. So here we're standing in the northern hemisphere in this diagram and we are looking to the north, meaning that if I walked into this picture this way, I would be uh, walking north. If I turned around 180 degrees or if I just started walking backwards, I would be moving south. If I turned to my right, I would be walking east. If I walked from here to this tree, if I walked from here to this little house, I would be walking uh, to the west. So this is the northern hemisphere. We see the north celestial pole and we see our stars spinning around. So this is the pattern uh, that we would see of these constellations if we were facing north. Now, if we turned to the east, so if we turned um, and we didn't move, we just turned and looked towards this tree, we would see something completely different. So we would see our stars rising above the horizon in the east. So the stars are rising in the east here. So they're going to, over time, rise above this horizon. They're going to keep rising until they get to their highest point in the sky and start um, setting in the western sky. 
So how would this picture change if we were standing on the equator? So this is uh, where these star trails can start to get a little bit tricky. So here we are looking east. And something important to note is that I said we are in the northern hemisphere. So if we moved from the northern hemisphere down to the equator, this figure would look a little bit differently. These constellations, of course, will still be rising in the east. However, instead of rising at this angle towards the south, they would be rising directly straight up. So they would be rising perfectly, uh, perfectly perpendicular to the horizon because they would be following that celestial equator. So here we're in the northern hemisphere. So our stars rise in the east. They get to their highest point in the sky, uh, pointing towards the south, and then they will set in the west. If we were in the equator, we wouldn't have this angle between our star trails and our horizon. These stars would be rising directly straight upwards in the sky. So here is if we turned and in that same position, we turned backwards and now we are looking south, uh, we see that the direction of motion has changed. So let's think about, uh, we will get into more of that in a couple of minutes. <laughs> let's think about um, distance one more time. I know I brought this up in a previous video, but I want to remind you about angular distance and angular diameter. So angular distance is the distance between two objects um, on the celestial sphere. So we use degrees, arc minutes, and arc seconds to report that number, that angle. And then angular diameter, we use the same units, but it is uh, the size of something. So how much space on the celestial sphere does that object take up in terms of an angle? So if the distance between two objects is one and a half degrees, how would you report that in um, arc minutes? You could say one and a half degrees is the same as one degree and 30 arc minutes because half of a degree is 30 minutes. Remember that each minute, uh, each degree is made up of, of 60 minutes. Each minute is made up of 60 seconds. So half of a degree would be uh, 30 minutes. So it's really similar to time. So just as a refresher. So let's think about what the sky looks like as we stand in different places on Earth. So here in this first image, you see here is Earth. We are this little shadow man. We see our celestial sphere and our horizon outlined. So the horizon being what we can see. So we can see this top half of the celestial sphere, everything that is above our horizon. So here we're standing at 90 degrees latitude, meaning, or that should say north, meaning we're on the North Pole. So standing on the North Pole, directly above your head is your zenith. And when you're on the North Pole, directly above your head is the North Pole, the North Celestial Pole. So directly to your north is the North Celestial Pole excuse me, <laughs> directly above your head is the North Celestial Pole. So in this case, you can see the full Northern Celestial Hemisphere. So here, the celestial equator al aligns perfectly with Earth's actual equator, with your horizon. So your horizon is right along that celestial equator. So this whole top half of the celestial sphere is literally the northern half of the celestial sphere because you are on the North Pole. So all you can see are the northern celestial stars in that northern uh, celestial hemisphere. So if we move a little to the south, if we were to walk south on the Earth towards, uh, towards the south to about 60 degrees latitude, You'll see here we still have our horizon. So we can still see half of the celestial sphere. You can always see half the celestial sphere. However, the celestial sphere has shifted in our viewpoint. So now we see that the northern celestial pole, instead of being directly at our zenith, is closer to the north. 
and our our celestial equator um, is also angled now. So it's as if the whole celestial sphere um, got tipped towards the north because we walked towards the south. So that celestial pole is going to point more towards north and we are going to be able to see some of those uh, southern celestial equator stars. If we walk even further to the south, so now we're at 30 degrees latitude, um, we see that the celestial equator is even more uh, angled. So our north celestial pole is even closer to our horizon. So notice here our celestial pole was up here. Um, as we continued to walk south, the entire celestial sphere shifted even more. So that north celestial pole is getting closer to our horizon. And that uh, celestial equator is showing us more and more of the southern celestial stars. So we still see half the celestial sphere from our horizon up to the zenith. But the stars that we see are changing as we move location on Earth. So if we continue walking south, now we are on the equator. So you'll see that the north celestial pole is directly on our uh, horizon to the north. South celestial pole is directly on our horizon to the south. So here is where you'll notice the celestial equator is directly perpendicular to our uh, horizon. So the equator of our stars is going to rise in the east, rise all the way up to our zenith and set in the west. So this is where if we were on the horizon, those, excuse me, if we were on the equator, stars would be rising directly straight upwards out of the eastern sky and then setting directly straight downwards in the western sky. So here we have our um, celestial north pole and our celestial south pole right on our horizon. So if we walk a little bit further south, you'll see it just keeps tipping. So now our north celestial pole has moved from here. It moved downward, then it was on our horizon, and now it is actually out of the frame. So we don't see the north celestial pole. But what has come into our sky is the south celestial pole because now we're in the southern hemisphere. So you have to be in the southern hemisphere to ever have a view of the south celestial pole. You can only see the north celestial pole from the northern hemisphere. So you'll notice that now the uh, celestial equator has uh, tilted even further. You can see the south celestial pole. The zenith is still directly ahead. And now your zenith is in um, the southern celestial hemisphere. So I mentioned that in the uh, northern hemisphere, you have to be in the northern hemisphere to see the northern celestial pole. You have to be in the southern hemisphere to see the southern celestial pole. So in either hemisphere, there will be constellations that never dip below the horizon. Now the amount of constellations that you see that never dip below the horizon is going to change depending on where you're standing or what latitude you're at within the hemisphere. So these constellations are what we call circumpolar constellations because they circle the entire uh, sky. They circle the pole. So it appears that these stars rotate around in the northern hemisphere. It appears that the stars will rotate around the north star. Polaris is our north star. It's in the Little Dipper um, asterism. So here is Polaris. And um, all of these stars will appear to rotate around Polaris. So here is Cassiopeia, my personal favorite um, constellation. And if this were a video throughout the night, we would know we were standing in the Northern Hemisphere because we see our Northern Star and we see these constellations rotating right around Polaris. So these are circumpolar stars. There are also circumpolar stars if you're in uh, the Southern Hemisphere. So this is a great image of some circum circumpolar stars. So this person um, had their time, uh, their not time lapse, their long exposure camera pointed towards the celestial pole. So they were able to capture that these stars are circling around.
the celestial pole. So all of these stars are circumpolar stars. So now where would you expect to see the largest amount of circumpolar stars? So here I have Norway, which is at about 60 degrees north. California, we are about 35 degrees north. Or Venezuela, which is 6 degrees north. Take a second, see what you think. We'll go over it. So when you're thinking about circumpolar stars, if you are able to see circumpolar stars, first of all, it means you're able to see the, let's say, northern hemisphere, since these are all in the northern hemisphere. If you're able to see circumpolar stars, that means you're able to see the north celestial pole. So that means you are not at the equator, because when you're perfectly at the equator is where the north celestial pole is right on your horizon, the south celestial pole is right on your horizon. So in order to see more and more circumpolar constellations, circumpolar stars, you want to actually be far away from that um, equator. So you'll notice here you're at the equator. If you looked north, there would be no circumpolar stars because all of the stars circling around the north pole would uh, set, rise and set in your horizon. However, if you were here in Norway at 60 degrees north, um, here you have the North Celestial Pole. So all of these stars would be able to uh, rise in the east, set in the west, and never set below your horizon because they will all circle around this North Celestial Pole. So the further uh, towards the pole you are, the more stars are going to be circumpolar stars for you. If you were at the North Pole, all of the stars would be circumpolar stars because the whole sky is going to be rotating around this north celestial pole. So the north celestial pole is directly above your head. Your whole entire sky is going to be rotating around that pole. So you'll actually be able to see many, 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 many <laughs> uh, circumpolar constellations. They will all be rotating around that celestial pole that is directly above your head. So here, I would like to show you this night sky chart. So here we are again. So this is similar to the one I showed in the slide. So we are um, in the night of Thursday, January 28th. So this will be after we have met for our live class. So if I play this as a video, you will notice, remember the uh, uh, zenith above our head would be right about here, the top of that dome. This is the entire celestial sky that we can see. So our horizon is all around this edge. Uh, this is our to our east. This side is to our west. Here is to our south. Here is to our north. So if I play this as a video, you'll notice that throughout the night, the stars and constellations will rise in the east, move across the sky, and set in the west. So that is exactly what is happening here. So rising in the east, setting in the west. And you will notice that our north star here stays in about the same position. So this is Polaris, the north star. This is where we have um, our north celestial pole. So everything will be rotating around this uh, north celestial pole. So this is all moving east to west before it sets beneath our horizon. So feel free to use this uh, website. I have it linked on that previous slide there if uh, you want to get some more experience looking at uh, the sky in that way. It is very cool. You can go all over the world, type in any location, any time, any day. You can see what the sky looked like on your birthday. Um, watch how the sky moves uh, throughout time. It's really fun to play around with. So let's talk a little bit more about our North, north Star. So here's our North Star. It is called Polaris. It is in the uh, Little Dipper asterism. So one way to find it is uh, the Big Dipper is 
generally um, recognizable in the sky. So that's one of the const the asterisms that does stand out and is uh, probably the most well known. So if you find the Big Dipper, uh, the Big Dipper, the top corner of the pan of the Dipper is uh, almost aligned with the North Star. So you should be able to use the direction of the Dipper to find the Little Dipper and then the North Star Polaris is at the top handle of the Little Dipper. So the North Star is called the North Star, so it's name is Polaris, but it's called the North Star because it is almost perfectly located at our North Celestial Pole. So the North Celestial Pole, the North Pole of our celestial sphere, is pointed almost perfectly at Polaris. So what that show, what that means is that in the Northern Hemisphere, here's another Star Trails video, uh, picture, it looks like all of the stars are rotating around that celestial pole, rotating around Polaris. So something fun is that the North Star will not always be Polaris. So there's something called precession. So what this is, is that Earth moves like a spinning top. So if you spin a top, it's not going to stay spinning forever. It's going to wobble a little bit. And Earth has that same wobble. We call it precession. So right now, Earth's axis is pointed at 23.4 degrees from the vertical. So the axis of Earth which is also the axis of our North Celestial Sphere, is pointing almost directly at Polaris. However, over time, Earth's axis is going to wobble, meaning that Earth's axis and the North Celestial Sphere of uh, the North Celestial Pole will not always be pointing directly at Polaris. It's actually going to move um, in our celestial sky. So I have a little video that I think um, shows really well what we're talking about. So let's watch this. Precession is the movement of the rotational axis of an object. It is commonly seen in toy tops, but all spinning objects can demonstrate precession. In astronomy, we are most interested in the precession of Earth. The orbital tilt obliquity of Earth is 23.5 degrees. Thus, the axis of Earth's rotation traces out a cone of half-angle 23.5 degrees in a period of roughly 26,000 years. This effect is often referred to as precession of the equinoxes. The technical details behind precession are beyond the physics covered in introductory astronomy, but they focus on the fact that Earth is not spherically symmetric but oblate, fatter around the middle, and the gravitational pulls of the Sun and Moon on this equatorial bulge cause precession. I will demonstrate precession with what is known as an air gyroscope. This particular model was manufactured by Ealing Corporation in 1956. We will observe precession on this 4-inch steel ball, and a pump will force air out a hole beneath the ball, supporting its weight and minimizing friction. Note that the ball has a rod attached, so one can view the ball spinning. Part of the interior of the ball has been hollowed out to counterbalance the weight of the rod. I will turn on the air pressure and position a weight at a predetermined balanced position. Thus the center of mass of the ball rod weight is over the center of the ball. When we spin up the ball, we see that it will spin stably for a long while in this balanced position. I now move the weight outward. The ball is no longer balanced and it is more analogous to the oblate earth. When I spin up the ball, we can now readily observe the slow change of the axis of rotation due to precession. Now remember that Earth's axis of rotation forms the basis for the celestial equatorial coordinate system. Thus, as the location of the vernal equinox and celestial poles change due to precession, the positions of stars in right ascension and declination also change. So although right now we have a fairly bright star in Polaris near the North Celestial Pole, that will no longer be true in about a thousand years. So due to this phenomena called uh, precession, we will see that the North Celestial Pole right now points right towards 
uh, Polaris. However, uh, through time, that celestial pole is actually going to shift. So the axis of Earth is actually going to move from pointing currently to Polaris. It's going to follow this path. So directly to our north in a couple thousand years, uh, we will see other stars directly in our northern direction. So this cycle is about every 26,000 years. So it is very, very slow. Um, like the video said, it's going to take about a thousand years for Polaris to no longer be in our northern direction. So the celestial sphere stays the same. The celestial sphere, in, when we're talking about precession, isn't changing. It's just that our vantage point will be changing because the northern celestial pole will no longer be pointing to Polaris right here. It is going to move uh, through time. So we know that in the past, the North Pole, uh, the North Celestial Pole, has pointed towards uh, other stars and other constellations. So here is a GIF showing that it's the North Celestial Pole here, and which is in alignment with the North Pole on Earth, will actually be uh, wobbling like a top. So it will be pointing to different areas of the celestial sphere, um, pointing to different stars, different constellations. So in many of that, uh, 13,000 years, about, um, our North Pole will actually be Vega instead of Polaris, our, our North Star, excuse me. So here, for now, we have Polaris as our North Star. So everything that circles around Polaris is called that circumpolar star. And the further you are to the north, the more directly ahead, uh, above you, you will see Polaris. So if you're standing on the North Pole, Polaris will be directly above your head, and all the stars will be circling around it. As you move south, uh, Polaris will move closer and closer towards your horizon. So here um, we see Polaris is not directly overhead, but it is actually about halfway maybe from the horizon to the directly overhead, the zenith. So we know we are somewhere in the northern hemisphere because we can see Polaris. We know we are not too close to the equator because we do see circumpolar stars, but we know we're not at the uh, pole because Polaris is not directly overhead. So here we're probably at 45, maybe uh, 50 degrees uh, north.